Thank you. For inspiring us. Thank you for connecting. And caring for one another. Thank you for partnering. Thank you for serving. Thank you for sharing your blessings. Thank you for sharing your faith stories. Thank you for your authentic worship. Well, good morning. My name is Liz D. Seth Pearl, and I'm one of the pastors here at Bethany, and I want to thank you for joining us in worship this morning, either in person or online. We're so grateful for you to be here today. We are now in week two of our new series called No Matter What, Finding Grace to Give Back. And last week, Pastor John talked about that when we are in a season of waiting, we still have a reason to be grateful. Because in the waiting, God has not left us, but God is preparing us. God is preparing us for the next chapter, for the next part of our story, preparing us for the future that he has planned for us that sometimes we don't even see coming. Today, we are going to talk about responding. Responding to what has been done to you and for you. And responding not out of a sense of guilt or expectation or obligation or not responding out of trying to make the relationship even or equal again, but responding out of true gratitude. When we allow ourselves to respond purely out of gratitude, our attitude, our emotions, and even the responses themselves, they change, especially when it comes to our relationship with God. Let me ask you this. How do you respond to when you receive a gift for your birthday? Or when a friend treats you to lunch? Or when you find a coffee on your desk in the morning? What, you know, what, what emotions do you feel? What thoughts go through your head? For me, it goes something like this. I receive a gift for my birthday, and at first I'm filled with gratitude. I'm so grateful that this person has remembered what my birthday is and has gone through the time and effort to, to give me a gift. And I do my best to say thank you right away. Then it quickly comes these emotions of feeling obligated or the weight of expectations like Okay, my mom was the queen of thank you notes when we were growing up. And so after every birthday and Christmas, she'd come with this list and say, here you go, Liz, write all of these thank you notes. And so a bell goes off in my mind even now that, oh, I better write them a thank you note. And not that writing a thank you note is bad or that it is the wrong way to respond, but I begin to feel this sense of, this sense of guilt and this sense of obligation instead of pure gratitude. It still kind of lives within me. And inevitably, after a few weeks goes by and I see this person again that has given me this gift, I start to kind of panic because I still haven't written the thank you note yet. So I do, when I do, I write the note as a response to more out of a sense of guilt than out of a response of gratitude. If someone buys me lunch, again, I am super grateful. I'm thankful for the time I get to spend with that person, for the free meal, for the, for the generosity that they provide. But then I find myself trying to make a mental note or sometimes even writing a note in my phone to make sure I know that the next time we go out to lunch, I need to be the one to treat, right? Like, I need to make sure that I, I do the same thing to them. Like, I need to know that they know that I know that they know that I know that I owe them lunch. Right? There's this sense that, like, I just want to make sure that everything stays equal, that, you know, there's this expectation that I need to make sure I express it. Again, out of expectation or obligation and not truly out of gratitude. If I come to work in the morning and there just happens to be my favorite coffee from Starbucks or Scooters on my desk, I'm super excited because who doesn't need an extra shot of caffeine in the morning? But after my first sip, then I start to panic and think, uh, who, who, who knows my coffee order? Like, who, who did this? Like, who put this on my desk? And, and do I know their coffee order? And how am I going to make sure that I get them a coffee or whatever they like to drink to make sure that, again, this relationship goes back to being equal because I know I now owe them something, right? Again, responding out of these emotions and not out of true gratitude. We can find ourselves moving quickly from gratitude onto feelings of guilt, feelings of expectations and obligations, responses to make sure the relationship is balanced again. But what if, 
What if we could let those other feelings fall away and base our responses out of the gratitude that we feel, the true gratitude that we feel? How would those responses change, especially with our relationship to God? Let's take a look at our story for today and see what Jesus does for Simon's mother-in-law, who, by the way, is never really named. He, she is just known as Simon's mother-in-law, kind of like how some people, you know, you're, you're like, I'm, I'm Josh's wife, right? Or I'm, you know, if you become a mother, you become your child's mother instead of your name, right? It's, it's, she's known as Simon's mother-in-law and um, learn from her response and how she responds to what Jesus does for her. So after leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked him about her. This one verse sets the stage to what has happened leading up to this story. Just a few verses prior in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus has been kicked out of his hometown. He's been kicked out of Nazareth, and so he goes from Nazareth to Capernaum, and he starts to teach people on the Sabbath, which is a big no-no, right? You can't do that. He teaches people in the synagogue, and then he heals a man with an unclean spirit, and there is this crowd around him. There always seems to be a crowd around Jesus and they see it and they see this healing and they get excited and they start to tell people about Jesus and his name and and what he has done starts to spread throughout all of the area and after so after a full day of teaching and traveling and healing Jesus went to Simon's house and again he was met with a person in need of help and this time it was Simon's mother-in-law she had a high fever, and she was very ill. Instead of taking time to rest, instead of wondering if, is it safe for me to go in there when she's sick, instead of leaving the house and saying, hey, I got to go somewhere else. I don't have, I don't have time to, to heal another person. Jesus enters right in and goes up to her exactly where she is. And he said, he stood over her and rebuked the fever and it left her. It doesn't matter how Jesus was feeling. It doesn't matter what he had done earlier. It doesn't matter if he was in danger of getting sick. Jesus met her exactly where she needed to be met. And she, he performs this miracle for her. Jesus saves her. Jesus transforms her life. And he brings her from near death to full healed life. And what is her response? Immediately, she got up and began to serve them. And at first glance, her response may be, look just like those same responses that we talked about that we can easily fall into. Responses out of expectation, responses out of guilt, a response out of wanting to bring balance back to the relationship and not of gratitude. Immediately, she got up and began to serve them. This woman was just a few minutes ago lying down near her deathbed, and now she's on her feet serving Jesus and those around him. Maybe a little off-putting to us. We can find ourselves thinking, like, shouldn't she be taking it easy still? Like, shouldn't she be kind of relaxing and they kind of help her? Can't someone just go get her soup or something instead of her serving them? But... What we can learn from her response is this. Simon's mother-in-law fully grasped what Jesus had done for her. She understood in a real and tangible way that Jesus saved her. He brought her from near death to full and complete life. And because of all of this, she's filled with true gratitude and she responded in the best way she knew how, by using her gifts to serve him. Not out of obligation, because she understood that there was nothing that she could do to repay Jesus. Not out of expectation, because she understood that she could not do anything as great as what Jesus had just done for her. And not out of making the relationship balanced again, because when you're brought from near death to full life, there's nothing that she could ever do 
to make that relationship balanced again. He had just saved her after all. She responded out of true gratitude because she knew and trusted and believed that Jesus had truly changed her life, not just for this one day, but for every day thereafter. And she was so filled with a sense of gratitude that she responded the only way that she could think of, by serving Jesus, using her gifts and her talents, her God-given gifts and talents to serve him and those around him. So what does this story teach us about our response to God? In our relationship with God, we have to remember that just as Jesus saved Simon's mother-in-law, just as Jesus transformed her life, just as Jesus loved her, Jesus does the same for you and for me. Jesus has saved you from the power of sin and the power of death. Jesus has transformed your life, marking you with the cross of Christ and calling you his child. And Jesus loves you no matter what. We have all been in places in our lives like this woman. Times where we have been either physically ill enough to where we have been stuck in a bed or where we have watched a loved one be stuck in a bed suffering or when we have been so overwhelmed by the pressures of this world, the pressures to be the perfect friend, pressures to be the perfect spouse, the perfect parent, the perfect employee, the pressures to have that picture-perfect social media presence, pressures that we are currently under under this current pandemic, it can be so overwhelming that we feel like Simon's mother-in-law and we are stuck. Like we need saving and we cannot do it on our own. And it's exactly in those moments that Jesus meets us where we need it to be met and shows up and gives us his grace, his hope, and his love. And when we fully rest in this fullness of his, of his gift, of his grace, of his love, then our need to respond out of expectation is gone. Because there is nothing that you could ever do that will make God love you less. Our need to respond out of obligation is gone. Because there is nothing that you can do that will make God love you more. And our need to respond to try to make that relationship equal again is gone. Because there is nothing that you can do that could ever measure up to what Jesus has already done for you. God doesn't want you to respond out of obligation. God doesn't want you to respond out of expectation. God doesn't want your relationship to be even. The only response that God desires from you is this. A response out of true gratitude. So will you pray with me? And ask me, ask God to help to show us how to use our gifts, the gifts that he has given us to respond to him, not out of this obligation or expectation, but to respond out of true gratitude. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we take this moment to simply say thank you. We take this moment to come into your presence and rest into this reality of what you have done for us. God, you have done so much. God, help us when we feel like we need to respond out of these feelings of expectation and obligation to remember there is nothing that we can do to make you love us more and there is nothing we can do to make you love us less. Help us to truly respond out of gratitude. Help us and show us ways in which we can use our unique gifts in the way that you want us to, to make a difference in the world. We ask all of this in your name. Amen.